Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Karim Sirajuddin here answering your online questions. So first question submission here is, my daughter-in-law brainwashed my son. Let's take a quick look. It says here, my son's wife, I believe, has been brainwashed. We are a very close family, and up until the day he married uh, this non-Muslim woman, we are a small family, and we can hardly visit them. But when we get the chance to visit them for whenever we do, we basically experience, you know, distance and, and coldness from our daughter-in-law. Uh, one example is when my daughter went to go hug her, she wouldn't hug back. Um, we have sent them birthday gifts to the kids um, and tried to be very warm and friendly, but we'd never get any appreciation. It seems that our son is basically spending all his time with his wife and their family, and we have been basically cut out. So, um, this is the concern that uh, has been submitted. So let's let's look at this and, and kind of unpack it a bit. So first of all, uh, interfaith marriages are definitely challenging uh, in our times, and they can be very difficult to navigate. Um, but you have talked about how you and your family have made efforts to connect with your daughter-in-law, and you describe your son losing connection to his own family. Well, I have a couple of questions, because of course there's probably a lot more background to this than just the paragraph you submitted. But let's assume that um, at the beginning, uh, when your son came to you and said, I want to marry this woman, uh, clearly she wasn't Muslim, she may be from a different cultural background. Uh, the question I have is, how did your family actually treat her at the beginning? Um, were you and your family, you know, treating her poorly? Uh, did you give her a proper chance before they got married? Or did you basically just, you know, reject it from the beginning and your son just felt isolated and alone anyways, and so he went ahead and did what he wanted? Because uh, it doesn't really make sense that your daughter-in-law, um, if she was really treated fairly and kindly from the beginning, uh, that she would react this way, unless she has a deeper problem, which we'll address. Uh, but it doesn't make sense for her to be this cold and distant unless she is responding to how she was treated by your family first. And we know that this sometimes is the case. So let's say that um, it is the case that she is simply reacting to how she has felt the whole time. Obviously, now that you guys want to be, you know, friendly and invite them over and send them gifts, I mean, in her mind, she might think, well, now you guys want to be nice, but... Uh, it's always been very difficult for us to get along, and I've never been treated uh, kindly. Um, you mentioned that your son has a few kids right now with her, so this may have been going on for quite some time. Uh, I, I don't know. That's why I'm, I'm asking. But if that is the case where she was treated uh, un uh, poorly before she got married, and it was a very difficult time for your family to accept her because she wasn't Muslim or she was a different culture, uh, it's likely that she's acting cold and distant, and now there is this competition for loyalty and emotional attachment uh, of your son, who is trying to, you know, make his wife and nuclear family happy, as well as make his extended family happy. But as you described, um, your side is is losing the the battle here. So if this is the case, um, I think that the first thing that needs to happen is you have to keep up with good relations. You have to keep up with you know, reaching out, and even if they keep ignoring you, um, as soon as you stop, that means that uh, she has won, right? Because if you no longer uh, try to, to have ihsan and excellence and beauty in your character, then you basically uh, give up, and then it's only going to get worse, right? The distance is only going to get worse between uh, the families. So the strategy that I would suggest is you, sir, and your wife, um, need to set up a family time to talk with your son and his wife, so you four adults, and sit down and talk about your feelings, your observations about the family relations over the years, uh, why you think they need improvement, and how they can be improved. Because sometimes we have a lot of assumptions that we carry from the beginning of the marriage, and we have um, uh, biased uh, ideas, we have sometimes unsubstantiated beliefs. For example, your daughter-in-law might believe that you guys all hate her, and that's why she's very cold and resistant to your efforts. Um, or she may actually not like you guys, genuinely. I don't know. Uh, and it's very weird that your son, who was very close to you guys, all of a sudden he is not. But secondly, you also have to reflect on the fact that, you know, if he was 
if he did have such a strong identity to his culture and his religion, um, most people who have those things don't, don't tend to marry somebody from a different faith or a different culture. So your son might not actually be as connected to the cultural values and customs as you would like, and clearly his choice in marriage and the fact that he is spending you know, a lot of time with her side of the family uh, may indicate that there is also a, an emotional disconnect with his own family. So you also have to ask yourself about your relationship with your son, right? You and your wife's relationship with your son and uh, what, what happened there over the years and why do you think he is resistant to integrating uh, his in-laws, i.e. you, into his new nuclear family? So these are, these are some things to think about, but let's talk about a possible other scenario of what's going on. So let's take it from scenario two. Uh, assuming you and your family were very caring and open from the beginning to um, your daughter-in-law and you genuinely you know, did your part to be nice and, and treat her like a human being, um, you know, try to welcome her into the family and, and although you may not feel like your son's choice was optimal, you still, you know, really tried your best to understand and, and be there. Um, and again, I don't know how those conversations took place. Um, what were your reactions to your son when he first told you, I'm marrying, you know, a woman who's not Muslim and, and maybe from a different culture. All of those things are, you know, these are sequen sequential events that have led to the current status of the family. So you got to also look back and ask yourself, you know, what were some of the most damaging or traumatic points emotionally for everybody? And uh, what responsibility did we have in, in all of this? Um, so let's assume that you guys did your part and you were really awesome to your, your daughter-in-law. And she is simply just very resistant and doesn't want anything to do with her husband's family. Uh, this, of course, is very scary and, and very dangerous. Um, sometimes uh, people who get married, whether it doesn't matter what faith they are, but sometimes when people get married, they have emotional and uh, psychological instability. And they can sometimes create this sense of, you know, because they need constant attention and um, utter attachment from their partners, they work very hard to compete with the person's family. And sometimes they really, um, you know, uh, try their best to, to keep their partner away from their family so they can have them all to themselves. And it sounds like that's what you think is going on as you described in your submission that you believe your son has been brainwashed. Uh, but again, even if he is brainwashed and even if his wife does have bad intentions, the question is why is your son in this marriage and, and what led him to go to such a situation? Uh, there's something going on there with your son too. Um, his wife may, may be a person who isn't interested in Islam and your culture and your family and she wants to disconnect herself as much as possible from that because she wants her kids to be as you know, more like her and her family, and that's why she works very hard to keep them apart. And that again goes back to your relationship also with your son. Uh, if your son has values and honors his religion and his culture, uh, this should not be happening. There should be at least a balance between both sides of the families. So there's a lot of unanswered questions here, and my advice is you need to go back to opening up the channels of communication. Uh, don't be passive. Don't conceal things that you really feel or observe. It's time for you and your son to be more honest and open with each other. And it's not about him just, you know, doing whatever you guys want. We need to understand the deeper emotional reasons why he is acting the way he's acting. And from my experience, it's usually because there's a lot of wounds there. And he's now fulfilling that pain from his own family with a new one. And so this is something to consider. So step one is think about the different scenarios and how you may have played a role in all of this. Step two uh, what is the uh, dynamic between you and your son first and foremost? Because before he even got married, he was your son and uh, there must be some aspects of that relationship that uh, led to such a choice or led to him being distant. Because again, if he was super close and, and identified with the religion and the culture so much, it doesn't make sense that all of a sudden he's acting like this, okay? And um, you mentioned that he has no common sense, even though he's very successful, you know, financially. Um, this may be possible, you know, I, I don't know. Uh, but again, you have to go revisit your relationship with your son 
try to have some conversations with him, uh, you and your wife, you know, and, and, and try to figure out, you know, where along the way in the last few years did all of this really become so separate and disconnected. And inshallah, um, through honesty and openness and communication, um, you guys would hopefully will be able to find some middle ground as to what's going on and how to have more of a balanced uh, lifestyle. Uh, and inshallah, Allah guides you all to find and discover the truth and practice um, humanism as much as possible. I hope that was helpful. Jazakallah khair. Assalamu alaikum.